I'm Lydia and welcome to Chiaro Scuro. Last video I did a cold read on this lovely painting. It's a piece I chose randomly off of Instagram. Shameless Instagram plug. Uh, and it's a piece I've never seen before, so I attempted to do an analysis of this um, and just seeing what I could observe, observe, uh, observe in 10 minutes. And we saw a lot of fun things, so if you want to check out that video, the link is in the description below. I just want to take a second and acknowledge the awkwardness of me trying to look at my script and the viewfinder at the same time. In between that video and this video, I've done some research on the painting. So now I'm going to try and tell you as much as I can uh, in, again, trying to hold to the limit of 10 minutes. Uh, because when it comes to art, I have a tendency to run at the mouth. So time limits are good. Uh, I also took go look at this painting with my aunt and her observations were extremely helpful. So thank you. All right, let's see if I can do this. Starting timer now. So this painting is called Amor Vincit Omnia or The Power and Love in Three Elements. And it was made by Benjamin West in 1808. Benjamin West was a character. He grew up in pre-revolution Pennsylvania, and according to Google, he was said to have been taught to paint as a child by Native Americans um, by mixing clay from the riverbank with water to create pigments. That sounds, well, I don't know. I don't know how to take that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he went on to be patroned by several important people, including Benjamin Franklin, and he painted one of the really famous um, portraits of him, portraits of Benjamin Franklin drawing lightning from the sky. And somehow between the riverbank and Ben Franklin's lightning, he was classically trained in art. So again, go figure. Uh, he went on the grand tour of Europe and then stopped in England for the rest of his life. This may have been partially due to the American Revolution. But how did he spend the revolution? By making friends with King George. King George eventually became his patron, allowing him to do more than just paint portraits, and he moved on to paint more interesting things, like Amor Vincit Omnia. And then he went on from that to help found the Royal Academy of the Arts in England, and he was given the title of the American Raphael by his English contemporaries. All right, now for the painting itself. Obviously, this painting is referring to the Latin names. Yeah, let's go with the Greek names. So, Venus. Descriptions hypothesize that the boy with the torch is Hymen, the god of love and marriage, and the museum website, this museum is at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, by the way, calls the little babies Cubans. You can definitely see the influence of the Academy in his art. Or is it the influence of his art on the Academy? This was a time when people, especially in Europe, were fascinated by classical themes, and Benjamin West painted many pictures inspired by the old Greek and Roman texts. This one was inspired by a famous line from Virgil's Eclogues, which is, quote, love conquers all, and the rest of the quote is, therefore, let us concede to love. This is commonly used nowadays in the context of someone overcoming great obstacles to reach his beloved. Now that's all well and good. However, in the eclogues, the speaker kills himself shortly after uttering these words. And this paints a rather different picture. Aha, uh -huh, paints a different picture. <laughs> <clears throat> it paints a rather different picture of love as a force of destruction. Dante, the immortal bard who is known for fanboying all over Virgil in the Divine Comedy, uses a similar phrase, which I'm not going to try and pronounce, it's here on the screen, in the mouths of Francesca and Paolo, or rather Francesca, because Paolo never speaks. Um, those famous lovers who do not have the self-control not to commit adultery, and hence are killed. By the way, Caravaggio also painted a picture by this title, Amor Vincit Omnia. This seems a little bit more like what Virgil and Dante were thinking. Although you don't see direct destruction and death, you do see the discarded instruments in the corner, and you get a, almost a sense of impending danger because that 
child, to the boy, he looks like, you know, he could at one minute be really nice and all sweet and happy and kind, and the, the next minute he could stab you in the heart with those arrows. So it's a beautiful, playful painting in some ways, but it's also, as most Caravaggio works are, slightly sinister. Thus, the phrase is connected with the destructive powers of love as well as the pleasures of love. So, let's see how this plays out in West's painting. There is Venus, looking all calm and strong, and there is Cupid, or Amor, with arrows but no bow, and this youth with the torch. As said before, the Met thinks this is Hymen, which is possible. It could also be Amor. Uh, who is sometimes distinguished from Cupid and sometimes is the same as Cupid, but whatever, that's not important right now. The important thing is the ribbons and the animals and the relationship of the animals with the hymen. We'll call him hymen for now. Let's look at the animals first. The lion is wide-eyed and startled or frightened, but under control. The eagle, the eagle is fighting, but also being held down. The horse, <gasps> no wait, it's not a horse. Here's a better picture. It, this horse, or whatever, has scales and flippers instead of hooves. It's not a horse. <laughs> it's a hippocampus. And this, for me, was the key to the whole thing. And when, I, when my aunt and I saw this, it all clicked. Because the hippocampus is a sign of Neptune, the god of the sea. And going from that to the eagle, then, the eagle is a sign of Jupiter, the sky god, and the lion we had to look this up. The lion is a sign of Juno, who is the goddess of the family. The animals are also connected with the elements, hence the second part of the name, the power of love and three elements. But all of these gods are also represent also, uh, all of these gods also represent forces in the natural and human realms. Neptune is connected with the destructive forces of nature, which can also be linked to the ideas of circumstance or luck. Um, Jupiter is connected to the passions and desires of human beings. Remember all of his many, many love affairs that he is unable to control. And Juno, the wife of Jupiter, is connected to jealous guardianship of lovers. Uh, so both of all, all, I mean, all of these gods have their good sides, but they also have their really destructive sides. So all of these things can be irrational and destructive. And when you look at the wildness of the creatures being painted here, it's suggested that the, that is what is being emphasized. But here's the catch. All of these wild animals are being controlled or held down or tamed in some way by Hymen, who is backed by Cupid, who represents passion, and Venus, who as the Roman incarnation represents a divine love, so a divine, wise, loving tenderness. This completely turns around the phrase from how Vigil and Dante used it. Instead of love being subject to the desires, desire, blah, 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 words are awesome today. Instead of love being subject to desire, jealousy, and circumstance, all of these things are subjugated to love, which should be that combination of passion and wisdom that's represented by uh, Cupid and Venus. Okay, how are we doing on time? Oh, wow, we have two and a half minutes left. Ah, I feel like a rich woman. Okay, so there's a lot more that we can get into here. Uh, when you think about how the composition is used then to emphasize this, you know, take a look at the, how the painting is divided into light and dark. All of the light is coming from the corner where the three god figures are coming from. And this light is actually that yellow patch that we noted earlier in the previous video, video right behind Venus's head. That's the sun shining through the clouds. So the sun then is this, this source of light and it's illuminating the gods while the passions are in shadow. Now this could be something that um, while definitely done purposefully, can either mean that these elements are, are dark, uh, they are the sources of darkness, or they simply are in darkness. They don't have the divine light of reason, which is especially at this time period, sources of light, especially in um, mythical images like this. The sources of light are usually simplify. Wow, simplify 
sources of light usually indicate rationality. So we have rationality uh, pouring onto the image of wisdom, like divine, tender, wise love, passion, and then this fourth element, the light of Hymen, who is the god of marriage, interestingly. Um, and it's that that is then bringing light to these other passions, to these other elements that they are then taking under their control. Now, either to hold them back from being destructive or to illuminate them and enact some kind of transformation. Don't know. It's hard to tell. It's almost like this painting needs a sequel. What happens after they are brought in control? What happens when these animals and these creatures stop being afraid, stop fighting? Uh, or do they ever stop fighting? So, ha, huh, that's one of the amazing things of art. All right, I'm actually going to stop there because if I keep talking, it's just going to descend into chaos. Let's see, how did we do? 17 minutes, perfect, 17 seconds. I'll just let that time run out so I have the pleasure of hearing the timer beep and not feeling like I have to rush. Yay! Okay. Sometimes looking at art is hard work, but man, once you see that thing, like the hippocampus and it all clicks, it's like you get a little glimpse beyond the veil. So, did you see what I was talking about? And do you see anything else that supports or disproves this interpretation? Leave a comment below and let me know what you think. And that's one of the great things about art is that you can come back to a painting like this and every time you'll see something new. So share with me. I'd love to hear what you guys see and what your thoughts are. I will keep doing more of these cool trees, but I'm planning on a few special things. So keep an eye out for that. Shameless plug, subscribe. <laughs> and I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>